welcome. Thank you for joining us to Mark Ash Wednesday. We are grateful you join with Soul and Church to begin the journey to Easter. And you start with this day in which we remember and we look forward. I'm Cindy Theobald, the pastor of Soul and United Methodist Church, and I am grateful you join me, Carol, and Terry for this time of worship. We will mark this journey with ashes and with the sacrament of Holy Communion. I invite you to have ashes or something that will symbolize ashes and bread and wine so that you can remember our beginnings with God, our brokenness, and our opportunity for whole living with joy and hope and steadfastness with God now and forever. Would you join me as we share together in our call, our call to worship? Glorious God, your thoughts are not our thoughts. Neither are your ways our ways. You look at the ugliest soul and see, still unstirred, the wings of an angel. We watch our neighbors anxious to find the flaw. You view time in the context of eternity. And so find a place for waiting, for yearning, even for suffering, even for dying. We demand instant results and look for tomorrow before savoring today. You know that only one who suffers can ultimately save. That is why you walk the way of the cross. We fear that vulnerability which defies our power. That is why we crucify. Your thoughts are not our thoughts. Your ways are not our ways. And yet we know that your way leads to life, and our way leads to death. But here we are, looking for your way. So we pray, forgive us in what has gone wrong, repair in us what is broken, reveal in us what is good. Feed us with your food, O Lord, your word, your love, your inspiration, your daily bread for our life's journey. In the company of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, only you, have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was born into iniquity, and I have been sinful since my mother conceived me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Behold, 
you desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear with joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. Were I to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. As we share together in our call to confession, we will uh, read some words responsively, and then there is an opportunity uh, for you to sing uh, the verses of the hymn, Create to Me a Clean Heart, O God, as part of this call to confession. Our sin separates us from a holy and righteous God, yet God longs to wrap us in an embrace of forgiveness and love. Let us therefore with confidence and gratitude name that which distorts our relationship with God self, and others. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great tenderness. Wipe away my faults. Wash me clean of my guilt. Purify me of my sin, for my sin is constantly on my mind. Change my heart, O God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me, this is what I Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. I have sinned against none other than you, having done what you declared to be wrong. You are justified in passing sentence on me and blameless in judging me. Yet I pray, Lord, that you would hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be like Create in me a clean heart, O God, 
Put a new and righteous spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your presence and keep my spirit steady and willing. Amen. Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be like you. You are the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me. This is what I cry for help, God will respond, here I am. The sincerity of our confession is more pleasing to God than all our boasting of accomplishments. Through our guide, our nourishment, our strength, we can repent of our wrongdoing and rebuild our relationships, and the light of God's unfailing love will be magnified in us. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. When you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity, I tell you the truth, they have received all the reward they will ever get. But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private, and your Father who sees everything will reward you. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on the street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your Father in private. Then your Father who sees everything will reward you. And when you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable and disheveled so people will admire them for fasting. I tell you the truth, that is the only reward they will ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair and wash your face, then no one will notice that you are fasting, except your Father who knows what you do in private. And your Father who sees everything will reward you. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store up your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Where your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. When we observed Ash Wednesday in 2020, life looked different. We didn't know much, if anything at all, about COVID-19 or that it would change our lives. It has stolen loved ones from us. It's altered our way of life and worship in ways we could not have even ever imagined or dreamed of. A year ago, we could not imagine the global impact this virus would have upon the world. I was marked with ashes as a sign of lament, of sorrow, of repentance for my sins. And I was marked with ashes as a sign of my intention to do my best to follow Jesus more closely, to, so to speak, turn things around in the way I lived, 
so that my life would more simply, clearly reflect the love of Jesus every single day. I was hoping that as I was marked with ashes, that I could share those intentions and that experience with people who were around me. All of Ash Wednesday last year happened when we could touch others. We could more simply and easily. We could hug people. Uh, we could just be with others without face masks. And I, have, I don't have a face mask on now because I'm the only person here. I didn't have to keep six feet apart from people. I could live in such a way that my marking of ashes would mark me so that how I lived, my prayer was that you would more easily see Jesus when you saw me. But everything is different now. And I'm wondering if we can use this very hard, strange time as an opportunity to reflect upon and make choices about our relationship with God. For you see, I think that Lent and this first day of Lent, Ash Wednesday, is an invitation to kind of dig in and dig deeper in the ways that we live. Because God is inviting us to think about how we can even in difficult and strange and cut off and separated and isolated times, be ones who live the love of Jesus even in a pandemic. Again and again, we come to this day, this first day of Lent, this Ash Wednesday, where God is calling us. God is inviting us. The invitation is here. Let's think a little bit about what it means to accept that invitation. As I was reflecting on what I might share, I came across this quote of what someone else said about Ash Wednesday. Tell me what it is you plan to do with your one wild and precious life. That's the last line of the poet Mary Oliver's poem, The Summer Day. Have you ever thought about your life as wild and precious? I have until I came across this uh, question and quote. I think it's full of invitation. It's actually full of freedom. And there's curiosity in it. It, it expresses so much. It's expansive. It invites me to think about opening my heart a little bit more. It calls me to dream, to go big, to imagine the possibility of the impossible. It asks me to consider and take responsibility for what really matters. That's why I think this is the perfect question for Ash Wednesday and for Lent. Sometimes it feels like Lent does a lot of focusing on our past, the things we've done and left undone. And we use those words in our language in our liturgy. It asks us to reflect on the life that we've already lived. But what if Lent, or at least this Lent, is about the possibility, is about the life that is yet to be lived? What if we gave as much or more attention to where we are going as we do to where we have been or come from? What if lamenting our sins and acknowledging our failures, strong words from our prayers of this day, are really about the urgency of reclaiming and treasuring what is wild and precious about our lives? So I'm inviting you as we begin this journey of Lent to again and again come at Lent this year 
as we come to it again and again, in a different way. I don't want you to think of Lent as a project for self-improvement. You know, if you give up chocolate, you might lose weight, or you'll reduce your cholesterol, or any of the number of things which are important and worthy actions to grab a hold of. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. But I, I, I want us not to see Lent as a self-improvement project or as the quote I had an opportunity to read called it, the project for sin management. Instead, can we discover, can we uncover, or maybe even recover our one wild and precious life? Really, have you thought about your life as wild and precious? Ash Wednesday sets before us the gifts of Lenten devotion, the gifts of, Lent, of disciplines that are part of a life of faith. It calls us to give alms, to pray, to fast. Those are the simple things in the Matthew text. And really, these disciplines are what we do as ones who follow the way of Jesus. We do give we do pray. Now, fasting, that's a little bit more challenging in uh, our contemporary world today. But there is something to be said to be thankful and grateful and careful about the food that we have and that we consume. Lenten disciplines, Lenten ways of life actually ask us in a lot of ways to increase the basic things that we're doing to give, to pray, to fast. And it's an invitation to grab onto some more because we already do a lot of these things. In other words, we are, we are to give to others in a way that creates their well-being in a larger way than we might have been doing. We are to intensify our prayers for the world in a larger way than we've already been doing. And we are to look at how we live our lives every single day and to think about habits that would benefit us from pushing something aside. You see, the invitation to Lent is an opportunity to live in ways that take us where we are going in this one wild and precious life. My prayer is that you, as I seek to do, are living and striving to live in ways that draw us closer to life with God always and forever. Well, in this strange year, we aren't gathered together to be marked with ashes. But I invite you to think about marking your heart. Marking your heart. Maybe with ashes, because ashes remind us of dust and what we came from. Maybe we can mark our hearts with ashes to claim the wild and precious life and the possibility that again we are here in this journey to the cross and the journey that we hope to make to resurrection of this one wild and precious life that God has uh, given us and calls us to live with intention the ways and work of Jesus. Now remember, it's not a, it's not a journey of self-improvement, and it's not a sin management journey. It's a journey of life, It's a journey of living the love of Jesus again and again and again. And it's a journey that every day that we take a step into it, we have the opportunity to learn a little bit more and live a little bit more. The ways and the work of Jesus. Amen. On Ash Wednesday, we begin the journey that is Lent a 40-day season before Easter, excluding Sundays. During this time, 
we follow the example of Jesus, who was led by the Spirit to a 40-day retreat into the wilderness before he began his public ministry. There, Jesus fasted and prayed in order to learn what God was calling him to do and to build up the spiritual strength and in integrity to accomplish it. In the same way, we now begin a period of reflection and prayer so that we can learn what it means for each one of us to be Christ's followers, to discover what God is calling us to do, and to be graced by God to grow in spiritual strength and integrity. On Ash Wednesday, we can be marked by ashes. Ashes are a symbol of our humble humanity and are tied to an earth which is finite and fractured. Yet ashes are also a symbol of cleansing and rebirth and a sign that in Christ we are made new. As we receive ashes, God invites us to turn toward God, which is the meaning of repentance, in order to receive from God a clean heart and a new spirit. I ask you to consider how you will spend these 40 days, what your intentions toward Lent will be. What opportunities will you take to reflect on and grab a hold of your one wild and precious amazing life? Will your heart be marked? Will you seek to live the love of Jesus every day? And if so, how are you going to do it? Make a plan for it and start. And if you fail, start again. And if you fail, start again. Again and again, come back to Jesus and grab a hold of that opportunity. For those of you who were able to uh, pick up uh, one of our Lent uh, take-home packages, you have received in your package some ashes. Please don't mix them with water. But you are invited, if you choose, to make the sign of the cross for yourself and for those who are with you. And I'll, I'll show you momentarily. But you also, if you received the take-home package, received a little itty-bitty uh, cross on a white card. My friends, this is a temporary tattoo. So if you are not comfortable with ashes, you are welcome to grab a hold of this, too. And if you mark yourself with the ashes, just dip your finger in them. A little bit goes a very long way. From dust you came, into dust you shall return. You are God's beloved. Repent and believe in the gospel. And if you're more comfortable with the temporary tattoo, you will need it to uh, be in water. And there it is. From dust you came, and to dust you, you shall return. You are God's beloved. Repent and believe in the gospel. You're invited to remember as we uh, worship this night that we share together in the sacrament of Holy Communion the memory, the symbol, the experience of Jesus gathering with his disciples in the upper room before his arrest, trial, and crucifixion to be with them and to love on them again. So I invite you, if you have your elements, to have them ready as we gather together. And anyone and everyone is welcome to receive the gifts of God, these means of grace, this reminder of love that is eternal and everlasting. When Jesus gathered with the disciples in the upper room, he took bread, gave thanks to God, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body. It is broken for you because I love you because God loves you. And likewise, after the supper, he took the cup, 
gave thanks to God, gave it to his disciples, and he said, take and drink. This is my blood, my life, my essence, and I pour it out for you because I love you and I want you to have a whole, fulfilled, amazing life with God. As we gather with the gifts of God, we remember the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. So I invite you, as you have your elements, to gather upon them and to take bread. And to take the wine. And in faith and fellowship, feast upon the gifts of God's love given for you because you are precious and beloved. Would you pray with me? Gracious and holy God, we thank you again that you love us so, that you have gifted us with life through your son Jesus. We pray as we have received these gifts, that we will declare our intention to draw near to you and to walk closer to you in our one wild and precious and amazing life in these 40 days. Amen. the acceptable time. Don't put in any obstacles in anyone's way. Work together to accept God's grace and to be reconciled to God. Loose the bonds of injustice. Break every yoke and let the oppressed go free. Repair the breaches. Restore the streets and let your light rise in the shadows of these 40 days. Amen.